Psalm 42 As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God my rock, Why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, Where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. Good morning, Church of Christ. Um, it's great to be together this morning, whatever that looks like. <laughs> and if you're new with us this morning, I'm Jack Jenkins and again, welcome. We're looking at Psalm 42 today, verses 1 to 11. If you um, want to take a second to pause and go and read that psalm um, or listen to it uh, and then um, catch back up. And we'll get started. So, um, if you've ever had this experience before, where you are really tired and you lay your head down in your bed and you are so ready for sleep and you tuck yourself up and you let go and instantly every single ridiculous, silly, worrisome, sad, dumb thing, memory you have ever had floods back into your brain. What is with that? <laughs> Have you ever had that happen? Um, I actually had it happen, I've had it happen a lot recently. I think I've been a bit tired, but sometimes if you're particularly lucky, you might go back decades. <laughs> Instantly, your brain decides to remind you of that one time in the shopping center when you had a little altercation, someone with a shopping trolley and you said something dumb and right now you need to relive it. Does that ever happen? Maybe you are just overwhelmed with feelings of a lost loved one, maybe. It's hard, isn't it? It seems to directly correlate with your level of tiredness and exhaustion, uh, as darkness, and it needs to be quite dark, as well as your desire just to sleep. <laughs> And the softness of your pillow, it just activates something in your brain. It's insane. <laughs> but we all do it, don't we? We all have times like that. I feel like this psalm's just like that. It's the ultimate dark night of the soul psalm. You can, um, you can imagine it, actually. You can see it. When you read the psalm, it's this point, this... Um, you can imagine the author of the psalm hopping into his bed, lying down at night, and the, the anguish and the suffering creeps into his mind. And he remembers the past, and his soul cries out for this lost experience. 
You can feel his suffering and his separation from God, the lack of physical presence to his history and his tradition that his culture celebrates. I drew a picture earlier in the week when I was trying to get my head around this psalm. I think maybe um, given the intensity maybe of our situation at the moment, I was, I was finding it really heavy. Anyway, I drew this. Let's see if we can see it. If I can get it in the camera without it. Okay. So I invite you just to take a moment and I just want you to reflect on the image here. This is obviously my image. This is my interpretation of this psalm. But I want you to have a think and maybe note down some words or thoughts that come to mind. They might be reflections of the psalm itself, but they might be your own personal reflection. When I, when I was drawing it, I thought about my own experience of thirsting, that idea of being sustained only by sadness. I don't know about you, but lately I've had times where I felt a deep separation from a way of life that seems familiar. I feel like this psalm draws some interesting parallels to our current state in lockdown. So the psalmist is writing at this time in exile. He's in Babylon and he's been enslaved and like I said, separated. He's away from Jerusalem. He grieves the loss of his past. While he's allowed certain liberties in Babylon and he's effectively free within the space he lives, he weeps for what is lost. He's mocked, where is your God? People ask. Where are you, God? He asks himself. The psalm is like a roller coaster. Once you get past that first initial grief, he pulls himself a bit together and he reflects on these beautiful memories, the joy that was the celebration of joining with his people and praising and celebrating their God. And then he mourns again and he grieves the mockery. And then he pulls himself together again and he reflects and then he goes back down. He does it several times throughout the psalm. At the moment, I don't know about you, but in some respects, I don't feel like that much has changed for me in lockdown. I am still getting up in the morning. I'm still making food for my family, I'm still parenting my children, I'm still sorting out little battles between my children and I'm still watching them grow and learn and do all those cool things. At the same time, I feel like everything has changed. I miss my family, those outside this house. I miss, like I'm a homebody but I miss going places. I miss not fearing the supermarket. I miss these things and I'm sure you do too. I've spent a lot of time um, on the phone or in emails with mums and dads recently who are just so heartbroken explaining to little dots why they can't go to the playground why they can't visit their friends, why they can't see grandma and grandpa. And I know that you guys feel that too. I 
I'm a big fan of Carl Rogers. Carl Rogers is a psychologist and him and, and his daughter actually have done, um, developed or hang on. Yeah. They believe in a number of principles, um, relating to the human condition, um, or pre maybe predispositions that we have. Mm. The most, um, the most significant to me, I think, is that they talk about an individual's ability for an organic, innate self-healing. He talks about the role of a psychologist or a helper to be there to support, maybe facilitate what is the individual's capacity to actually heal themselves. In, I must say that in most cases, I think there's some things that fall outside of this, but m most cases we are actually equipped with literally all that we need. This sounds a little bit, well, it could sound a little bit like I'm saying that in the absence of of our awareness of God that we can still manage, that we can, that potentially what I'm, what you could hear is that when we don't feel God or in the worst times, we can just get along fine without him. But that's actually not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is actually the opposite, that I, I believe, and if we believe that if, that God exists in all things and that we are created by an abundant good God, that he is in all things, I don't think that the psalmist is separated from God. I think he's just grieving being separated from all that he knew. Is this making sense? <laughs> God is with us. Even when we feel entirely separated, he is our hope. I love the self-talk at the end of this and i think this is this is what i'm saying in relation to this self healing this capacity to pull it together that we actually all have in the psalm i love when those times through the psalm when he he pulls himself he he catches his thoughts and he says why why are you thinking like this? You know better. I have this really romantic, and I think this personifies what I'm thinking, this really my uh, romantic image of women in war times. I see them, um, I don't know, some of you might just find this amusing, but I have this beautiful image of these strong women who send these their husbands and sons and fathers off to war and they are grieved, greatly grieved, but they tie on their penny, they bring out the self-talk, they know what is, what is real and what needs to get done and they just pull themselves together. It'll end things will change. The psalmist questions himself. He pulls himself back into line. Why are you so downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, praise him. My savior, my God. Today, however you're feeling, if you feel like you are still in the middle of the wilderness, put your hope in God. Praise him today. 
He is your hope. And just like the psalmist who feels separated, you're not. That hope is within you. It lives within you. You have this potential, just like the psalmist, to remember and to reflect and to pull yourself together because it is gifted to you from God. He is your hope. Dwell on it today. Think about it. Water it. Grow that hope in you. You have this capacity to live, to thrive in adversity. You are through him life in the wilderness. Join with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you and I praise you for your consistency, your unwavering, unchanging love for us, your dependability, that even when we can't feel it or we feel so lost, so separate, that you are there. Lord, we, we just want to lift our world to you now. We want to release the burden into your hands. Lord, help us show life to those around us when they too feel like they're in the wilderness. Remind us, Lord, that you dwell within us. Help us to grow that hope. Help us to recognize it. Lord, we just thank you for this time. Lord, we praise your wonderful name. Amen. Thanks, guys. Good morning again. Morning to Church of Christ. So I have August and Jonas here with me this morning. And we are just going to put those down for a minute. And we're doing communion together. So... We had just, um, I've just been chatting with church about um, Psalm 42 and it's about uh, the psalmist who wrote the story. He's a little bit in an experience like us. He's separated from his normal life and um, he's struggling a little bit with it because he misses all the good things that he was going to be doing um, and the ways that he used to um, celebrate God and hang out with his, his, I guess, his family and the people of his culture. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? So um, we talked about in, <laughs> when I was speaking before, we were talking about how, um, how we actually, that God is actually not, doesn't matter where we are or what's going on, God's actually not that far away from us. And um, we were talking about trying to, dwell on or think about, not being silly, think about those um, uh, remembering God and <laughs> remembering God and thinking about those growing that hope that we have that things will get better or that he's with us, loving us and protecting us. Does that make sense? Yeah. And communion is a good time to do that because it reminds us of our relationship <laughs> It's all right. <laughs> with our relate of our relationship with God and what Jesus did. Orgs, do you remember? What did Jesus do for us? Do you remember what he did? Why we have communion? You're not gonna say? <laughs> because Jesus died on the cross for us, didn't he? Because he loved us so that we could be close with God, and that's our hope. Our hope is in God and um an eternal life. So we're going to take communion today because it's just like remembering. So I invite you to pause this video if you want to go and grab um, a cracker, or some tea, or we've got some apple juice. Mm -hmm. 
and we are going to take communion together. So guys, it says in the Bible that Jesus, the night before he died, he took some bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body that is given for you. And he, and for the forgiveness of sins. And he said, do this, eat this together to remember me. So guys, do you want to get a little bit? Or a big bit? I <laughs> get little bit. And we remember mm. what who did and we say thank you. And then it says, after dinner, after they'd eaten, he took a cup and he said, this is my blood. This is pour, that's poured out for you so that you can have a relationship with God. So let's drink to, <laughs> let's drink together. All right, I'm going to pray. Can you close your eyes and we'll pray? Thanks, God. Thank you that you love us, that you care for us, and that you're with us. Thank you that every time we share in communion, we remember your sacrifice and we're reminded of your great, incredible love for us. Thank you that you are never far from us, that we are never separated from your love. We, in, we ask God that you would remind us of those things that we can be grateful for this week. And help us to love and care for those around us. And we pray this in your name. Amen. 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 Oh. <laughs> All right. Pencil fell from the sky. Did it? All right. Have a good morning.